What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with part four of the SAB Raw Puma 700. So in part three, we got a lot done. We got the heli sitting on its skids. We got the boom on. We got the tail casing done. We got the battery tray done. We got a lot of odds and, and little thing. Belts ran, tension, tensioner, all that good stuff. So now we are going to first start with doing the push rod. The epoxy has dried. I let it dry for two days. So now we can go ahead and get the ends put on. And we're gonna do that first, get the tail push rod put onto the helicopter, and then we'll move on to canopy mounts. I know we kind of skipped that step, but that's what we're gonna do first. All right, so we're gonna grab our push rod here. We're gonna grab our end, and it's going to be self-explanatory. We are going to thread our end on. And then I like to take this little guy here that they give you in the kit, and you're just going to turn. And you're going to thread your push rod end all the way on. And you're going to do this on both ends till you get an overall diameter of the push rod of approximately 749 millimeters. So go ahead, get that one done, flip the push rod over, go ahead, get this end done, get it started by hand, drop the push rod on the ground because you can never go through anything without dropping something at least one time. Go ahead, get it started and then run it down with this guy right here. Right, so we're gonna go ahead and get the tail push rod installed. So as you see, we got the ends done on the push rod and we got this brass piece. Now on the brass, this little brass guy here, you're not gonna glue this yet until you get the push rod on powered up. It's gonna be one of the last things you do and you get it into this holder here. So first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and we are going to pop this guy ball link on, remember SAB logo facing out. So go ahead, pop this one on, okay? And then slide this brass insert into this little clip here. Okay, now that's slid into there perfectly. So now let's go ahead and flip the helicopter over so you guys can see what we're doing here. Okay, let's move the camera. All right, I don't know if you can see this good or not, so let's flip the helicopter this way. Okay, so you should be able to see that just a little bit better. Okay, so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna wanna hold our pitch slider, center it out, okay? And then we are going to want about two to four degrees of right cyclic. Now make sure your tail servo is at 90 degrees. So as you see, Right now, at tail servo at 90 degrees, we need to screw this push rod or this end in a little bit. So we're gonna do maybe two rotations in. Hold the push rod good, okay. And then we're gonna make sure our push rod on their servo is 90 degrees, which it is 90. And that's gonna give us about our two to four degrees. So we have to straighten this out. Actually, I want to go just a little bit more. All right. Now that right there looks good. So let's pop it on. And now there we go. So now our tail servo is exactly 90 degrees. And we have about two to four degrees, about two degrees of right cyclic inside. Now we'll adjust this more once we get the tail blades on and we can actually see. So now let's move on. All right, so the next step now is going to be the FBL slash RX plate. So now you don't have to run this piece if you're not running a separate carbon fiber or a separate receiver, but I'm gonna do it anyways, just cause it looks nice and it kind of covers up the boom blocks a little bit, kind of ties it together. So you're gonna grab your mount. This is an aluminum mount, it's gonna go this way. So now picture this is the sides of the helicopter, this is the tail of the helicopter. So you're gonna set this guy on there like this. It's gonna be a two and a half millimeter driver. You're gonna have three of these screws. So we are going to simply run one screw here. And then we're gonna grab the other screw and we're gonna tighten these three, or yeah, these three screws down first, Loctite of course. And then we're gonna move on to mounting the rubber uh, little dampeners. So now we're gonna grab our rubber dampeners and you see a little bit of Loctite. So now with these guys here, you're gonna go into these outside holes. So these you're just going to start and you're going to tighten by hand. Just tighten them down till they stop. Do not torque these down. Do not try to get a pair of channel locks or vice grips on them and try to tighten them up because you will tear them. So you just tighten them by hand till they stop. The Loctite will dry and do its job. That's all that's for. If you try to torque these down, you will absolutely 
destroy them. And on this one, it's gonna go into the second hole here. This hole will stay open. Go ahead and tighten these guys down. And then it's just a simple fact of you're gonna grab your plate and now your plate is going to go on this way. Countersunk holes up. You're gonna grab a two millimeter driver and you're gonna use these little short screws here, these little countersunk screws, dab a Loctite, and go ahead and just screw these guys down like this. So now go ahead and run your other three in and we'll move on. I want to touch on real quick. If you do not want to use these little dampeners and you want to hard mount your FBL plate to the mount, this bag right here, 31-2, that's what this is for. You're going to use these little brass guys as spacers and you're going to run and just bolt this mount directly to this mount. So that way you don't have the dampeners, but I like the dampeners because it helps absorb the vibration. So now let's move on to the canopy posts. Okay, so canopy post time. So you're gonna have your carbon fiber plates here is going to be a two and a half millimeter driver for the Allen screw. You're gonna grab one plate like this. Now this is going to be the right side mount. So with the little tab down like this is going to be the right side and you are going to assemble it like this. So you're gonna grab your screw, slide it through, lock tight on your screw. You're gonna grab one of these little beauty ring washers. You're gonna slide it through like this. And you're gonna grab this little cup and you are going to tighten this guy down just like this. Go ahead, lock it down. So now you should have, this is going to be a right side mount. And then you're going to do the exact same thing for the other one. You're just going to do it the other way. So you're going to lock tight your screw. You're gonna grab your little mount here. We're gonna be assembling it this way. So you're gonna slide it through. You're going to be sliding your little beauty ring washer and the canopy cup or whatever you want to call this thing, the mountain base latch. You're going to lock it down and there we go. Now we have a left and a right side canopy mount. Make sure you do a left and a right. All right, so now we are going to move on to mounting the FBL mount and receiver mount. There is a hole here and a hole here. So we're going to start with this front hole. We are going to grab a canopy mount that we just made and it is little tab down long forward so you're going to use a two millimeter driver you are going to position this into place get it started rotate this up grab your next screw use loctite of course i shouldn't even have to say that after all this time you guys already know the deal loctite everything unless it goes into a lock nut go ahead get that one started lift this up just to where you know it gets started and where you can find the thread don't ever cross thread or force anything to go in if it doesn't go in freely and smoothly it is cross threaded and you will ruin the threads oh sorry i knocked right into you guys i hope i didn't knock you out you still there you feeling okay in there all right good so now do the same thing on the other side you're going to use your canopy mount and it's going to go this way it's going to be mirrored identical on this side and we can move on to the next step all right so next step we're going to go ahead and start the wiring so i already went ahead and mounted the icon we're running the icon 2 hd on this model so i went ahead of course cleaned everything with rubbing alcohol used the provided double-sided tape from the icon got that stuck down so now we're going to start with i already started covering the wires and heat shrink so I just pull the ends off, slide heat shrink up. I'm gonna heat shrink this down. This will allow us to run the wires this way through here. And then back here will be a big junction piece as we shorten these wires and tie them directly into the FBL unit and give me a nice clean and simple run. On the Icon HD, we have a plug back here and this plug is your power speed plug. So if you're running like a separate 2S LiPo or anything like that, you can run directly off of this guy, run this for power. But since we are not running a 2S LiPo feed on the uh, Hobbywing ESC, you have your separate, oh, dropped the wire. You have your separate line here. So you have your red and black, or red and brown is power for BEC, and this is your governor. So your governor line will plug in up here, and then we're just gonna desolder these wires, and we're gonna solder our BEC power lead directly into this plug. So that'll be BEC power lead. And then your throttle, of course, you have a secondary BEC power lead. So I'm going to go start heat shrinking these wires down, getting it all ran, and we'll keep so up. I went ahead, got the heat shrink shrunk down on the ESC wires. So now these two are together, and they will sit about here, run down. Even though the expert wires are black, I went ahead and covered them with heat shrink anyway. It's just so all the wires match. I didn't want these to be heat shrunk when you could visible see, you know, yay much about this far. 
and these just be regular. So I just wanted them to match because it's all got to be clean. So we got to do the elevator servo wire now. We'll probably end up shortening this lead and this will be a direct. I don't know how I'm gonna do this one yet. Usually I run it this way and around, but because it is already so short, be able to tie it down. And then we got to do the rudder servo, which will come up this way and it'll be a direct, nice run in covered in heat shrink. So I'm gonna continue doing this, get these wires put through. We're gonna cut and shorten these down. Just like we talked about, positive, gonna go down to here for the BEC, governor port, and so, so. I went ahead, got all the wires through, got them all joined together, and then I always heat shrink the end junction out so that way they're a nice clean run. We still have to run elevator servo wire, but that's gonna be run this way, shorten it up, plug it in, and we still have to run rudder servo, which will go to here. But we got throttle, servo uh, one and two, and then this is servo three, and then four will go there. Got BEC power to the bottom. So now we're going to mount this little cover to help hide all that and give it an even cleaner look. So for that guy, it's just a simple, your one screw with the beauty washer and then your two little screws. So your one screw with the beauty washer is gonna go into this spot here where it's missing a screw. And then your two smaller screws are gonna go there. So go ahead and just lock tight those, screw them into place and you are good to go. Right now, went ahead, got the wire sheet cover on. We got it all zip tied up. So all that's left is the back servo and the tail servo. As far as wiring on the servo side go, we got the BEC, everything all done up. Now we are soldering up bullet connectors. So on the motor, we are running six millimeter bullet connectors. And for the battery so sets, motor and battery are, are the RC Pro Plus connectors. This is actually my first time using these bullet connectors. And I, I'm very, very impressed by the actual quality of the connector itself. And I love how when you put these connectors together, they snap together. You get a very satisfying snap out of them. The camera on a tripod so I can show you this. You get a very Listen here, ready? That connector is snapped together. No play, no wiggle. And they are very tight. So when you go to pull them back apart, they do come apart, but that snap lets you know they're together. So I highly recommend these connectors. And on the battery, of course, they have the little sheeting on them. So that way you get your positive and your negative and they slide together really nicely. So after I get these soldered up, I will be showing these off as well. So I'm gonna get back to soldering the motor and get to the battery connection. So I went ahead, got the SRXL2 in the mail. We're just running the 4651T. You can see that. But anyway, so we got that mounted. We used the stock uh, 3D printed mount that SAB gives you. I cut about a half inch off each side. So that way, number one, the antennas weren't too high. And number two, you know, the tips of the antennas came out. And I went ahead and mounted it, double-sided tape to the back of the elevator servo. So now, we need to run telemetry wire. Now, I kind of jumped ahead of myself here, so I got to pull this cap back off, cut all this heat shrink back apart. But we are going to be tying into, if you can see it, that P on the ESC port, that open line right there. So we're going to tie a wire from there, and we're going to use this little bullet connector we're going to run this little two millimeter bullet connector in between here so that way damien if you ever need to pull the esc off for whatever reason you have a separation line because you can pull your two lines here disconnect your motor and pull the esc off at least now with that little bullet connector it probably wouldn't be a problem you could always unbolt the fan but whatever we're just going to put a little bullet connector there so i got a wire made up here already crypt the servo end on we're going to push it into that connector i'm going to keep this covered in heat shrink retie it through all this and we are going to switch this line over i'll explain how i do this so you can get full telemetry from the srxl2 to the icon so let's get that done so we got the esc telemetry wire which again is off of that p port side we ran it this way along this harness up here and it runs into channel five of the icon now remember something very important on icons and brains. The 456 port should never ever have power. These are signal only ports. So never plug anything with power into this side. So signal from the icon or from the, the hobby wing. Telemetry on the P side is going to run through and go to channel 5 of the icon. So now the next step is going to be for wiring the SRXL2. As you can see we got it right there. Is going to be the wire now srxl2 has a four pin connector as you can see we have four pins but we only need three so my buddy gino made a great little diagram and i'm going to post a picture of that right now
So that little diagram, if you can pause the video and you can look at it, and I'll explain it in the video too on how we do this. But so in here, you'll notice that you have a gray wire. So now that gray wire is not needed. Now that black wire, so now next to that black wire is gonna be your power. Now you might get this confused because this little guy here looks redder than this looks like an orange. So you would think orange is a signal wire and then that's power, but that's not the case. So your black wire is your ground. The wire next to the black wire, now yours might be a different color. I've seen them in different ways. That is gonna be the power. So that little orangish yellow color wire is the power. The gray is not needed, so we're going to pull the gray out. And then this little reddish brown wire is the signal. So now I'm going to make this up and go over to a servo plug, and then you'll be able to see it. But you also have that diagram that I posted a picture of that you could pause and look at as well. All right, so I went ahead and made this wire up. Now you can see we have plug on this end to a servo plug on this end. Now this is the wiring for the SRXL2 going to the Icon. So again, your black is your ground. You're gonna have, depending on what wire you have, which model you have, your power is going to be next to the black. So just because the power is, or this wire is orange, yellowish orange, and this wire is like an orangish red on the other side, you would think that the red wire is your power, it's not. This yellowish orange wire, or whatever color wire you have that's next to the black is your power. And then this reddish orangish color wire is the signal. So it's going to be wired into the servo plug the same way. Ground on the bottom, middle is always power, and then signal. And then gray wire is took out because we don't need it. So now I just wrapped this wire in heat shrink. So I'm going to go ahead, heat shrink this down, and heat shrink the elevator servo wire down, which I have already pre-done and made up here. Heat shrink that, run those two wires back through this little heat shrink junction box, and then we can shorten up the tail servo wire, and the wiring is finished. We got the wiring all tied back up again, run through its heat shrink. We got it all zip tied back into this little cover that they come with, back into its little heat shrink junction, poked a hole, ran the elevator servo wire, comes out this side, the SRXL2 wire comes out this side, they run down into this little heat shrink junction and nice and neatly into the FBL unit. I went ahead and shortened the rudder servo up, covered it in a heat shrink, so I'm gonna go ahead and heat shrink this down, we're gonna run it down along here, up and through here, and right up into the FBL unit here. It'll be nice, neat, and clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that heat shrunk down, get that ran. We're gonna use our lovely magic fabric paint that we always use on FBL units to glue all these wires on. So that way they can never accidentally somehow pop out. And then we're gonna add the satellites, which are gonna plug into the side here. We're probably gonna run them here and here. And then we'll be good to get the blades thrown on this thing. I actually solder the battery connectors up and power this up for the first so time. So gone ahead and decided to put the satellites here. We got one on top, one on bottom, and then the SRXL2 here. So I went ahead and cut this a little shorter on each side so the antenna stick out. So we have our SRXL2 and our two DSMX satellites. I need to cut and shorten these guys down, make a little harness. This one will run to here. The bottom one will run down under and to that side. And then the wiring is 100% complete as far as radio gear goes. And I went ahead and got the connectors all laid out here for the RC Pro Plus connectors. So we got to get these guys soldered up, get all this done. And we got to cut and shorten the battery leads because we are running the 12S Manic X stick pack, 3300 milliamp. So this guy will get these two short and direct run. And then these two will probably be shortened as well since this battery is dedicated to this helicopter as Damien wants to do it that way. So this battery will stay on the tray in this helicopter. So we'll make everything nice, neat, short run wires. And then we can get the blades tossed on this thing, get the canopy on and finish Went the setup. And just got the complete wiring done up. So we got all the satellite wires ran, give you a nice good look back here. Super clean, SRXL2 running the channel three on the icon and then channel five, or not channel five, but plug five, running up to the telemetry side of the Hobby Wing 130HV. We got our RC Pro Plus connectors on. This is my first time using these connectors. Super, super nice. I really like them. They snap together nicely. I, I love that they're, that they're you know sheeted and covering and screw connector. They're not gonna go anywhere. I highly recommend these connectors, well worth the money. I went ahead and color coded these two for you, Damien, so that way when you pop them together, you know, of course they're shorter, but you know, you know, orange to orange. And then these are color coded, so I need to make 
Damien a set of charge adapters to run from here to his charger. So we'll do that, but that's not part of this video. But the Puma 700 is completely wired up and it is ready for radio setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab his iX12 and I'm going to grab the laptop, start the icon programming. I'll get that done, come back and show you everything working. But I think it came out pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Oh, one little tip real quick. Uh, this little brass leaf. Make sure after you do your radio setup and tail servo is neutral, you know, centered out, that you put a little drop of CA on the inside to hold this. You want to glue this sleeve to this carbon fiber push rod, but you want to make sure that it is centered so you get equal throw both ways. So I always wait to do that till it's powered up. Let's grab the laptop, plug it in, and let's power this thing up for the All first time. Right, so something I wanted to touch on real quickly when running the SRXL T. Now we are running the 4651T. So in the menu here, when you're under your receiver selection input, you need to click, you might want to click SRXL right down here, but no. You want to click this SRXL2 section here, click that, and then that'll allow you. If you're using a 49, uh, I believe it's a 50, 5951, it'll tell you in here for which port you're using. If you have any questions, come up here, click on the little manual tab. Okay, we're going to go to Brain 2 with integration of SRXL. And in here, it's going to tell you everything you need to know. So it'll tell you down here that if you are running a 4649, which is the antenna list, you need to select the XR, SRXL. But if you are running a 4951, which is the antenna version, that you have to select... Over here in the wizard, you need to select, uh, where is it? Here, you need to select this port up here. So if you do that, it'll work. I was having an issue because I was selecting SRXL. You do your spectrum bind and you're good to go. So now you can see as we flip through the screens here. Now frame loss, don't worry about that. It's just because I was unplugging and plugging a bunch of times trying to figure stuff out. And we have to power down. So we have motor current. Now this is going to be a real-time no, data. No. Flip through the screens here. You're going to also see RPM, throttle percentage, motor current, BEC, voltage, temperature. So you're going to see everything. This is BEC voltage down here, BEC temperature, BEC amperage. So everything works. You have full time telemetry, full time data, right to your radio with the SRXL2. I'm going to finish the icons. So now that we got the icon all set up on the puma now we can move on to one of the last steps and we only have two things left on this helicopter build and that is canopy locks and gluing the brass on the tail fin so just like all the other canopies that we have done you're just going to simply take your little grommet and you're going to push it in and kind of work it into place and again if you haven't watched any of the other build videos sometimes you can take a little driver and you can kind of just work it around inside of here which i have found makes it easier and you just want to push it around i like to just go around and around and around and then you flip the canopy over and you do the same on the other side grab that little grommet go ahead and push that guy into place get it in here take yourself a driver Kind of gently work it and just push it around. All right, so then you're going to take your push lock. And I like to use this 3-in-1 silicone oil. I use this on all my canopy grommets. And what I like to do is I like to just put a dab inside of here. And I like to put a little dab on the actual twist lock itself just to help it lubricate slides into the grommet better to hold the back of the canopy kind of wiggle it around here and get that grommet to start it can be a little tight and a little tricky which is a good thing though because you don't want this popping out carefully work it into place and now your canopy latches in flip the canopy over and do the same thing and then use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a paper towel to clean up your mess so you don't have silicone oil all over your beautiful SAB canopy because that's not what you want. Carefully grab that guy 
and just work it into place. And just like that, your canopy latches are done. And just like that, the raw Puma 700 is completed. So we went ahead, got the guy glued into place. We gone through the complete radio setup. It is ready to fly. We are ready. Charge the packs up. Again, running the Maniac, Maniac X uh, 12S 3300. So we have the pack charged up. We've gone through setup, gone through the whole model, made sure everything was ready, secured, locked, Just a pre-flight check. And we are about to head to the field to get the maiden flights in. But as you can see, it came out incredible. I am super happy with it. I know Damien is super happy with it. I've sent him videos and pictures along the way. You can see we got the SRXL2, two DSMX satellites, one on top, one on bottom. All the wiring done, cleaned, as clean as you can possibly make a helicopter. We got telemetry as you guys already seen. We got our RC Pro connectors, battery wires, ESC wires shortened up so it's nice direct runs. So now we are gonna head to the field and go fly this thing. So we're gonna end off part four here and the next video you guys see on this model will be the maiden flight. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I wanna thank Damien again for giving me the opportunity to build this thing cause it is just incredible and a bunch more build videos to come. We got some cool starting next. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe, take care and have a great day.